Are you a painter, a musician, a novelist, some other type of digital artist? You know, we're all on social media like Instagram or Facebook, but as an artist, do you really understand your rights to your art on social media? If your answer is no, you're in the right place. We're at the beautiful Art Institute of Chicago. In today's video, I'm gonna give you the five rights that as a social media artist, you probably didn't even know you had. Be sure to stay till the end of the video when I'm gonna give you a little present, just a little one, that will help you avoid the pitfalls when you wanna post your art to social media. So hit the like button and subscribe and come with me into the heart of the matter here in beautiful Chicago. Hi everybody, I'm attorney Ian Corzine and for 20 years I've been giving creators legal advice on how to protect their art, but now it's your turn. In the heart of the matter, I wanna give you tips and advice to help protect you in this social media atmosphere that we live in. Okay guys, let's get right to it. The five rights you have in your art on social media. Right number one, you have the right to protect your art. If you have created an original work of art with just a little bit of creativity, you are entitled to protect that from others' use. Apple Computer proved this in court. In 1982, Franklin Computer stole the operating system out of the Apple II and put it in their own new computer. Well, of course, Apple sued Franklin. Franklin defended on the ground that, listen, that computer code we took was like a mere mechanical machine part. There was no creativity attached and it was not subject to copyright law. Well, the court felt differently and ruled in favor of Apple and said that, listen, that operating system, all that machine code is definitely creative and worthy of copyright protection. The Apple versus Franklin ruling shows that copyright law applies to any work of art, whether it be written word, music, or computer code. As a social media artist, you are entitled to prevent others from taking your work without your permission and posting it online. Right number two, the right to reproduce. All copyright law allows you as the original artist to make copies of your work so that you can sell them. But the question I get a lot is whether or not I can take others' art, change it, and then post that to social media as my own. Under the legal case, Carry Out versus Prince, the answer is yes. This, of course, was that case where photographer Patrick Cariou posted this photo in his 2000 book, Yes, Rasta, one of my favorites. In 2008, artist Richard Prince put blue eyes on the photograph and a cutout guitar and sold it as his own. In Cariou's lawsuit against Prince, the court held that there was no copyright law violation. It said that Prince totally changed the nature and character of the photo to make it his own, and it was sufficiently transformed to allow this new art to not violate copyright law. Well, this incited quite a controversy in 2013, but the upshot of this case is that you are allowed to take another's work and post it onto social media so long as it is totally transformative in nature and you make it your own. You know, I'm curious about what you think on this issue. Did the blue dots and the cutout guitar totally transform the nature of Carriau's original picture? If you think yes, write yes in the comment section below. But if you think no, that the case was wrongly decided, then write no in the comment section. I wanna hear what you think. Right number three, the right to perform or display. A question I get a lot in my practice is, can I do a cover of a famous song, like a Drake song or a GNR song, and then post it to YouTube? Usually what I say is, well, do you want the technical legal answer or do you want the real life answer? You know, most want the legal answer and that legal answer is no. Generally, you need two different types of licenses to be able to post a cover on YouTube. You know, Post Malone has the exclusive right to perform Rockstar. So you need a synchronization license and a mechanical license to be able to legally put a cover on YouTube. You know, the real life answer is Post Malone probably doesn't care if you post a cover of Rockstar on YouTube. One, it might generate more exposure for the song, and two, he doesn't want to alienate his fans by suing them. But if Post Malone did complain about your version of Rockstar on YouTube, you could get a copyright strike. And if you get three copyright strikes, then you are out of YouTube forever. So it is a little risky to post covers 
of famous songs on YouTube. Right number four, the right to transfer. Let's say you create a digital painting and you put it on social media. And let's say a wealthy doctor comes to you and says, hey, I wanna buy that painting for $10,000. You, of course, are gonna sell it. Six months later, you're driving around town and you see your digital painting on billboards across town, advertising the doctor's practice. The doctor violated your copyrights. You sold the doctor the ability to show the painting. You did not sell the doctor your right to be able to make copies of the painting, distribute it, and make money for the doctor. The copyrights to a work of art stay with the artist. They can only be transferred if there's a signed writing and it is expressed in the agreement that the full copyrights are transferred to the new owner. Right number five, the right to register. As the creator of an original work of art that you post on social media, you have the undeniable right to be able to register that work of art in the U.S. Copyright Office or your own country's Copyright Office. You know, if you really care about your work of art and are worried that it might be pirated, then I always recommend you register it with your own country's Copyright Office. You know, in America, it's like $55 to register your work of art. Why not do it? If you have to bring a copyright infringement action later on in time, you're entitled to statutory damages of between $750 and $30,000. You can recover your attorney's fees. There are a lot of reasons why you should register your works of art in the Copyright Office. Okay, now we've discussed the five rights you have in your social media art that you probably didn't even know about. Now it's time for that little present I told you about. In the description section below, I included a link and that link, you can download my free checklist for art on social media. What I want you to do is download this particular checklist and then use it every time you're contemplating posting your art on social media. This way, your rights will be protected. Also, be sure to check out the Heart of the Matter Facebook group on social media. It's a great group. It's a place where we can talk in more detail about the subjects we talk about in the YouTube videos. I also give you links to free templates that you can use to protect your rights to your art on social media. And one more thing, tell me if you think the law we discussed today is strong enough to protect artists like you on social media. If you think so, then write artists in the comment section below. But if you think the law needs some help and needs to be stronger, then tell me why in the comment section below. And while you're at it, why don't you hit that like button and subscribe and also hit that bell button and you'll be notified every Wednesday when a new Heart of the Matter video comes out. Okay, so now you know your five rights as a social media artist, but I'd love for you to check out my new video on copyright on Instagram. All right, I'll see you next time.